So like most people in the industry, it happened by chance that I ended up in insurance. I started off with a long-term insurer doing general administration work and then quickly got to thoroughly enjoy and, and get to love the insurance industry. I then went on to a bigger domestic insurer and I have since then um, been working at Marsh for the last 16 years. So I've worked in various accounts, um, on various sizes um, and really have achieved various milestones as, as, as a result of, of being exposed to a lot of different things. And being fresh out of school, I decided I want to take a year just to decide what I wanted to do before I went and studied. And like I said, it, it was more of an administration type position. And then while being exposed to all of the different items around me, I mean, at the time it was, it, when I started, it was long-term insurance. And just the intricacies and just the depth of, of what goes on when you at school level, you don't realize the importance of insurance and what it entails. And a lot of people think it's just an, an industry that you could just go work at for the sake of working. But there's a lot of deep knowledge that goes into being in this industry um, and learning of so many different people. And um, it, it's just amazing. Insurance is, is a people's game. You need to be able to have good interactional and and um and just conversational skills and just be a people's person to be able to to get ahead at least in in being a client facing um position so when i say i got into it by accident it was never my my goal or my aspiration to be in insurance just it just worked out that way and i'm very grateful for it so i think it, it's so important that people learn from a young age how how beneficial it is and how important it is to to plan for your future, not only from an investment perspective, but to just ensure that you in a position that should something happen that it, that is that is not planned for, that you do have a backup plan. I think first and foremost, especially if it is is a referral from someone or it, it's someone that by chance just lands up on your desk, I think the most important thing is to arrange a one-on-one -on -one meeting as soon as possible. Post-COVID, a lot of people have almost taken for granted the importance of a face-to-face -face interaction. So that's the first thing, um, is, is just to meet face-to-face. -face. Secondly, and what's most important, because I think because we are in the industry and we know what we think they need, we tend to forget to listen. So I make a very strong point of giving the floor to the client and to tell me, from their perspective, what has worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, and what the expectations are. Because it, it's so easy to go in and give a full bone presentation or, or outcome in terms of what you think. Um, but if you don't actually sit and listen to what the client wants, it can very really easily be a big mist. Um, I mean, definitely take a comprehensive approach after having those discussions and um, it's imperative to analyze the business operations and identify the potential risks because each client will have, have different scenarios that they are concerned about and um, work closely with them and have various meetings to check if we are still aligned in terms of our thinking so that the outcome is is going to be best for both and um, and um combined with that leveraging the industry knowledge and and tailoring an insurance solution that addresses those unique needs think top of mind, especially of what we've been experiencing recently, is, is definitely the changes in climate change. Cyber threats is very high on the agenda. Um, and just, just generally understanding how insurers also have risk themselves. And they also need to reinsure those risks. And, and how the South African market is currently placed in the biggest scheme of things. I mean, historically, um, and that's something that Old Mutual has actually been very good at, at keeping us abreast of, is that historically, the main thing that insurers used to look at are things like a fire risk, where, um, you know, that, you know, let's just, the risk, what are the chances of this building burning down? And what are the chances of, um, what is the maximum possible loss that we can assess? And a very small amount of the, the price that they were asking, for example, for those risks actually related to natural catastrophic events. And if we look at the floods that have been not only in the Western Cape, but if you look, for example, at Kuzir Natal, it's been unprecedented over the last five years. And in certain instances, to such an extent that clients are self-insured for flood. 
Now, years ago, that would have been unheard of if you said, I can't get insurance for flood or I can't get insurance for earthquake. You'd laugh and you say, no, man, that's not possible. So I think those are the main topical um, areas at the moment. And like I said, um, cyber is also very high on the agenda. And a lot of clients are, are quite interested in the things that are changing in that space. The AI advances that are coming in. We've got so many clients who sit with a substantial amount of data. Um, and what reputational damage that would have should any of that data be leaked. I think there's various things that need to be taken into consideration. Um, the negotiating of favorable terms and conditions with insurers requires strong relationships, market knowledge, and effective communication. It's important to understand that when you are approaching an insurer, they are sitting as someone at their desk looking at a piece of paper. So the quality of the submission is key. Then being in a scenario where you actually can get him sufficient information in terms of the risk that relates to that from, from a physical protection perspective, that is very important. And maintaining strong relationships with insurers allows us to leverage not only our, but their expertise to negotiate the most competitive terms. What goes hand in hand with those negotiations are being sure that you are up to date with the current market trends and developments. It's key to continually attend market functions, have open and sometimes difficult dialogues with your colleagues, not only locally, but throughout your organization to see what kind of, um, you know, opportunities or challenges they have, they have been faced with and how they manage to, to get around that kind of negotiating um, perspective. But I think again, the, the bottom line is um, effective communication, which goes down to the detail that you're providing. Um, then um, relationships. Relationships are very, very important. There's only so much that insurer can in certain instances do with the set of information and the restrictions that they have internally. And sometimes um, that relationship just, just goes the extra mile to, to try and get something that's very difficult to cross the line. Um, so it's become so easy to just send a WhatsApp or send an email or go into a team school, but that one-on-one -on -one interaction is so important. Um, and not only that, but also speaking to your clients to see what they're facing, because sometimes it happens that they also are, are exposed to industry-specific challenges that, that might not be an insurance challenge, but that we might be able to assist them with in terms of a broader offering. I mean, also just saying a brief of insurance publications. I mean, I often read the cover magazine um, and those are, that's very helpful because you've got small insightful articles on specific items that you can go and look at. Um, and don't forget about the people who work around you. Marsh is a very big organization. Um, we are a worldwide company. And I think, again, just to ensure that you speak to your people, not only locally, but internationally as well because they might have been faced with similar scenarios that could help you um, and help leverage, um, you know, a different outcome for your clients. Yeah. Well, the natural catastrophic scenarios are, are becoming a lot more prevalent. In the past, South Africa has not been linked with being high risk when it comes to weather-related incidents, neither things like earthquakes, although it is still few and far between. So that is that is a big focus. Internally, we also have access to various global reports, which we share with our clients. And then that is also a way to open the dialogue in terms of what they would have not necessarily thought was an insurance consideration, but that's something that we can strategize towards going forward in terms of how we can plan for any form of event that could possibly in the future become uninsurable and how they can start saving towards or, or become um, aware and prepared for those scenarios. The reality is, is that what is insurance? Insurance is there to protect you against an unforeseen event. If a lot of the scenarios that we're having now get mixed back weather, if that's becoming precedented and that is something that continuously happens, it's no longer something that is unforeseen. And then it becomes a rand swapping exercise. So you don't want to be in a scenario where, God forbid, we ever get to a point where there's absolutely no flood cover available anymore for certain areas, that clients aren't prepared and haven't already started saving towards self-insuring against those kinds of eventualities. I think the first thing from a broker's perspective is just be available. If your client is calling you at a funny time in the evening or over a weekend, you know something, so there's a reason. They don't just call you for the sake of saying hi, what's going on. So be present and be available. Then try and make them feel like you are, that they are your only priority. Because the reality is, is that you are their trusted partner 
they want to feel that they are in good hands because you can say a lot of things in a boardroom about how wonderful a product is, but you can only test it when it comes to plan stage. So um, proactive communication, um, be it through um, verbal or, or written um, documentation is key just so that they're always aware of where we are. Um, also, um, a clear understanding of where there could be some potential challenges so that they are aware that we might have some scenarios we 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 might have a bit of a challenge and then to work very closely with your technical team and the insurers to ensure that they are fully aware of not only the, the you know the cause of the claim or the quantum of the claim but how the policy is going to be responding as a result of that it's our jobs as brokers to be able to get the best out of a claim scenario for our clients if there is any gray areas we will find it so it's imperative to work closely with both your clients and and the insurer and ensure that through the whole process they understand where you are um, and like i said to to again just highlight if there might be any challenges communication is key fast you know just 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 getting into the insurers as soon as possible to get an, an assessor onto the site because if it takes a few days to, to get to a catastrophic loss i mean we had a scenario not just last week whereby the roof of the entire factory was blown off. You know, it's all hands on deck. Everyone is there. Everyone's trying to protect their assets. Everyone is trying to ensure that what they're doing is within um, the acceptable rounds from an insurance perspective. And it's always imperative. And, and we advise our clients, always act as if you're not insured. Do everything you can to protect what you've got and to avoid any further damage. And if someone is not able to be there immediately, take as much photos as you can so that you can document it and you can use it as evidence going forward. I think, and it was a very difficult time for a lot of people, but COVID was a very big, is a very good example. We, we had a lot of clients who were very uncertain in terms of what would happen as a result of the losses that they, that they sustained following damages from, from the riots that broke out. And that caused a lot of, I want to say, a lot of people becoming uneasy. You have, you get to a scenario where you expect to have certain cover. And if you don't realize that that cover is limited then there's a huge change so one of our clients um it's a retail client um, and they had substantial damage at a lot of the stores following the riots in july at the time um insurers initially agreed to pay um, an up upfront lump sum to assist them but to actually finalize that claim took um in excess of 24 months um, and we only in the last few months got to the point where we actually managed to come to an agreement to the final um, settlement of the claim. The fact that we walked that whole process through with the client and we had the correct people on board and we had specific claims advocacy teams available to us um, made a huge difference. For example, at the end result, the insurers actually said, this, and there's still a lot of information here, but let's come to an agreement whereby we just um, settle on an amount. But that wasn't enough for us because the initial settlement that they offered was far less than what the client expected and also what the client felt was due to them. So through various discussions and further negotiations, both locally and abroad, because a lot of the cover was placed out of in the London market, we managed to give the client a settlement, which was nearly four times what the initial um, final offer was. So yeah, so that, that was something that without um, being in a position, have the backup and, and the access to certain individuals for their skills, we would not have been able to, to get to that result. It's important to remember that women bring a wide range of strengths to the table. We are still very much in a predominantly male-dominated industry. I think, like I said, just embrace you as a woman being unique. Don't be intimidated by those around you and, and, the, and the nature of the industry. Focus on developing your own skills, building your building a strong network and, and seeking out leaders who can provide guidance and support. And then I think just work on things like interpersonal skills. Women bring a, a unique set of skills to the table. So we have strong interpersonal skills and empathy and, and we are usually a lot better when it comes to attention to detail. Now, these strengths can be leveraged to enhance your client outcomes um, and by fostering strong relationships you can understand your client's unique needs so um, women's perspectives can also drive innovation in the industry so i think just continue bringing fresh ideas to the table 
surround yourself with people who uplift you and, and just stay close to what's happening around you. It's a very, very industry, um, interesting sector. Um, and yeah, I think it, it's not spoken about enough. And like I said, it, it's, a, it's when I was certainly um, still at school, it, there's not a lot of, of focus. I mean, you always hear about the lawyers and the accountants that they do something you know, that is, that is respected, but, but it's so unfortunate that, that something like being, um, an insurance broker or an insurance advisor is not higher up when it comes to, um, to career aspirations. Just, just the way that, that Marsh works, um, we, we really go in as a team. Um, and I can honestly say I've been very lucky, even though we've been in a situation where they have been times when there, there's been bias. I have personally never felt that. Um, and the reason I say that is because I've always been surrounded by a lot of very strong women, but also I've been involved, I've been surrounded by a lot of men who are very pro and very keen on assisting you to reach your potential. So, um, you know, from, from a woman's perspective, I wouldn't necessarily say that I, that I've brought anything new to the table. I think maybe just again, being empathetic and, and listening more with a personal touch than not only thinking, you know, business, business, that makes a big difference. Um, I mean, I had a scenario very early in my career where um, one of my clients, while they were away, a portion of the house burned down as a result of their son who had people over for a bribe. And although they extinguished the fire during the night, a strong wind came up and those embers were, were reignited again. Um, and had it not been um, for the animals that, that alarmed the, you know, the children to wake up, there could have been serious fatalities. And then... In a time like that, the only thing you can do is be there for your client. I mean, and it's something as silly as going to visit your client and realizing, oh my God, you know, these people are so stressed out. They haven't even thought about, you know, small things like, like what are they going to be eating? Something, something that is a very small gesture. I mean, we went to the Woolies and we got them pre-packed meals and, um, you know, enough water and um, definitely some wine on the side to take the edge off. But that, that small gesture of just being there with something small like, yes, meals for the next week to help you get through this difficult time that you don't still have to think about what you're going to be cooking for supper made, made a huge difference. And that included little things like snacks for the kids for school. And, you know, so, so as a whole, not anything specific, but there's, there's that specific story. That client will never forget me, you know what I mean? Um, and even though I'm not servicing that client anymore, I can at any given time, if I run into them, they'll say, gee, Rose, how are you doing? And how are the kids doing? And, you know, um, we remember when you helped us and, and it was a really difficult time for them. And that's what they remember from a policy response perspective, but where it makes sense, like in this instance, to actually just be human, you know what I mean? Just be supportive as an individual. I mean, insurance is not only about, you know, being in a situation where you have a mechanism to assist you. If your car is stolen, there are various things to consider. I mean, you have, you can go into risk management, you can go into analytics, and it is such a wide field. We have so many people in our industry that have qualified for jobs or for, or for different types of industries that bring so much to our industry because it's such a wide space that... You could be a financial manager somewhere and you can come into the insurance industry and you can make a huge difference, you know? So um, if we go back to, to what we can do, um, you know, to try and get more women into the industry or to for people to be aware of that that, that is such a, you know, that it's a good um, industry to go into, I think, like I said, um, a bit more um, communication and, and reaching out to, to schools and, and universities as well, I think. Because a lot of people realize at the end of, the, of their studies that they don't know if they really like what they studied, you know, and do they really want to spend the rest of their life doing a job that they don't enjoy. Insurance is, is a moving target and it changes all the time. As different scenarios arise, you know, that's how they develop and grow to change. So just surround yourself with people um, that can mentor you and, and, and help you grow, you know. Um, yeah, don't, don't be closed off to any opportunities and don't think that doing something small is not going to make a big difference at the end of the day. Leverage what you've got and use it. It's a very powerful thing to be a woman. Don't underestimate yourself. I think that's the main thing. Each client is unique. Each 
industry is different and each have their own set of, of challenges and, and concerns. And what might be very concerning to a retailer might not even be on the radar of, of someone who's in the agricultural space. So they yeah, are. So so just just to remember that this is this is a personalized solution based environment that you are in. So um, and and I think women drive innovation in this industry by challenging a lot of traditional approaches and bringing fresh ideas to the table. Our, our link to Old Mutual goes even it goes way back. I mean, like I mentioned, I started off in the long term insurance. And, and Old Mutual was a pivotal role there for me. So, so I've been very fortunate to be, see different different divisions within Old Mutual. I personally work very closely with the domestic side, so with Elite and, and with Tarina and her team, because I have um, a client base who are professional um, and, and wealthy individuals. Um, and then we also have a very close link to the property side on the, on the corporate space. Um, and there's always an opportunity to collaborate and share insights with 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 a respected industry partner like Old Mutual. It's imperative to highlight the importance of continuous learning and professional development in this industry. It's not enough to think that you did a training course once or twice and that you can just continue and think that you're going to be at the top of your game. It's crucial to stay updated on emerging risks and industry trends and, and very importantly, regulatory changes, changes that we faced with. And um, it's so important because by investing in your own knowledge and skills, we can better serve our clients and contribute to the growth and success of the industry as a whole.